Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about how to buy the other guy. So if you have somebody in mind, somebody wants to sell your company, uh, sell you a list, or if you want to sell your company, this is a great episode just to catch up on the do's and don'ts. So stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. Uh, we've been doing this for five years, so there's hundreds, hundreds of shows, hundreds of hours of content. Go back, binge it all, watch it, watch everything, follow us on YouTube, and of course, every other social media platform. And if you don't know me, my name is Jersey, and I am a rep for windowcleaner.com, and I would love to be your personal rep so if you have any type of orders definitely let me know uh my number is 862-312-2026 and there are hundreds of you out there watching the show who are the ultimate cool kids you're the person who watches every episode or at least has watched a ton of them and you put your orders in through me that is how i make my cheddar and it, yes it is a shameless plug uh but uh i'm not going to stop plugging myself uh so again if you want something anything please let me put your orders and cost you nothing extra all you got to do is be logged in just click save this cart and text me and i can put the order in for you plus i'll get you a limited edition cool kids sticker if you let me know um only exclusive to this show by the way Another thing, if you are a nerd about window cleaning like I am, you are going to want to have the absolute best magazine for the window cleaning company, business, anything. It's been around since 1986. It's all these stickers you see on people's buckets and tools and everything else. Every single issue is paper. It comes to you in the mail with a sticker sheet every single month. I mean, who doesn't love real magazines? Something you can read on the toilet. (laughs) Uh, go to awcmag.com look it up it's american window cleaner magazine absolutely amazing please do get that um bring it to the next level uh get a magazine get a subscription it is absolutely cheap in the realm of learning in general so go and do that and uh more importantly um with the magazine i also own that so i can see you putting those uh subscriptions in Anywho, Um, so today we're talking about how to buy the other guy. Now, we did get, uh, this is sort of on a request. Uh, Someone had sent in a request that was kind of close to this, so um, we're kind of modifying it a little. But if you have any ideas for shows, really, really let me know. Uh, I've been doing this for so long, I probably maybe touched on the subject, but I love ideas, sticker ideas for the magazine or uh, ideas for shows or just any of the ideas that you may have, uh, send them to me. My number is 862-312-2026. Anyway, this is an idea for a, for a show uh, and I kind of tailored it a little bit. But it's how to buy the other guy, right? A lot of us have either thought about buying a company, um, somebody was going out of business, Um, maybe you did buy a company, maybe you sold a company, maybe, maybe, maybe. And there's a lot of different things that we could do, a lot of different ways that we can benefit from it. And there's a lot of really cool things that come along with buying a company, but you got to do it right. So how do you buy the other guy? That's the question, because a lot of times we get it and people will say, Hey, I got this guy. He wants $115,000. Is this a good deal? To spend $115,000 on a company, it would have to be absolutely astronomically amazing. So we're going to get into that all and evaluations and things and all that stuff. So it'll be an interesting episode, even if you're not selling, because there's always going to be somebody who has put up their company. Uh, I've personally purchased, uh, in the window cleaning world, I've purchased uh, five uh, window cleaning companies and sold two kind of like one and a half we'll say my second company i didn't have very long so i don't really count that as like a company sell but there's a couple things to think about and first off let me just say this of the people who order from me i got two names i want to give quick shout outs that i always forget and put it in the middle but it's matt uh, masadi what's up man 
and Mike Sneed in Canada. How's it going? By the way, I want to say what's up to you guys. Uh, and uh, I didn't get a name on who had suggested the um, the show topic, so I didn't put that in there. But there's always somebody out there who kind of wants to get something for their company. And the unfortunate part in your end, because you're buying, and uh, the unfortunate part of your brain if you're selling, is that people think their companies are worth way more than they actually are, right? I'm going to give you the number one thing. Now, if you're buying a company, you're more already on this mindset. But if you're selling a company, this one's really, really hard. Because um, we've been there and done that, and we kind of we kind of have a passion for these things. These are our babies, right, when we build a company. But there's no cash for blood, sweat, and tears. I'm not going to pay you for how hard you worked. I'm not going to pay you for how many sleepless nights you had and uh, how much your family struggled in the beginning. And I'm not paying for any of that. I don't care if it took you a year to build this company or 10 years to build this company. I don't care. That has nothing to do with me. How good of a business owner you are or how fast your growth was or where your growth contingency was or how you did it or whatever doesn't affect me. What affects me is numbers, straight numbers. And this is a hard concept because a big part of uh, business ownership is the struggle. It's the reason we all look super old. I'm only 22 years old and I look super, I look like I'm in my late 20s, <laughs> you know. Uh, no, but that's why we all have it, right? Business ownership's hard. That's why 90% of businesses fail. They're hard. There's so many pieces to it that have to keep going and you have to be a good business owner to do this. But I don't care how good of a business owner you are. I care about the numbers. And the numbers are going to tell me if you're a good business owner or not. It's not going to tell me how much work you put in or how hard it was. I know guys that did, you know, uh, $300,000 in their first year. I know guys that did $12,000 in their first year. There is no benefit to both of them if they're in the exact same profit margin, the exact same anything, and don't, I don't care what your first year was. And that's hard because you put all this effort in and then people go, man, I'm going to sell my window cleaning company. I think I could probably $2 million for it. Mm, no, no. Let's, let's talk about what you get with a business because here's the truth of the matter. In any business that you buy or a business you're selling, what do you get? Like, What are you actually buying in a business? So I'm going to give this answer and be completely honest with you. All you're getting is a list of customers who like to have window cleaning. Now, if you're buying a company, it's really easy for you to be like, yeah, yeah. That's a, if you're selling a company, you're like, no, these are great customers. I've had these forever. They're loyal. They're... See what you're doing already, right? Blood, sweat, and tears, and passions, I don't care about. It's great that you have them. Like if we were talking about how to be passionate in your business, that'd be awesome. But when I go to buy a business, I'm buying the numbers. I'm buying the numbers, right? So what are you getting? You're getting a list of people who like window cleaning. In fact, they like it so much that they have purchased from the company. Now, they haven't bought in from you and they haven't built a rapport with you and they haven't um, liked, loved, and trusted you. They liked, loved, and trusted the company you're buying. But for the most part, if you buy a company and things move, there's always the point where somebody goes, well, I really liked Al. Al was really the reason that I, uh, I I continued to use you. They were great, right? I had an operations officer uh, for, he worked for me for six years, I think. It was great, just amazing. Everyone loved him to the point that most people didn't even know who I was. They wouldn't even give me checks if I was on the job site. They would give it to him because they liked and loved him. If he decided to start a company People would like and love him. They don't necessarily like and love the company that I created. Now, the problem comes in when you're buying a company is that 
you are not going to have 100% retention. Not ever, not ever. Because if you're buying a residential list, a company, maybe there's people already on the books, right? Maybe they watch WCR Nation and they're doing the dentist clothes, which by the way, if they are, that's a valuable company, right? So maybe let's say 75% of them, they already got money booked. They already have $50,000 worth of work booked for 2023 when you're buying this. Now, as close to secure as possible is that people in the books when you show up awesome if you show up don't say anything and i'm wearing a different logoed shirt it's gonna be slightly confusing oh no worries yeah we just uh, took over the list and you know we're we're bringing on the clients same warranty same every you can calm them back down but now the possibility of them using you again is potentially up in the air they liked and loved and trusted this company. They don't know you. So all you're buying when you buy a company is a list. Now, if there's assets, awesome. Assets are a different story. Um, my big company that I sold, I should say, uh, the first one had lots of assets. We had a bunch of trucks and we had, gosh, I mean, tens of thousands uh, of dollars worth of gear. Tons. Probably more than that, actually. I'd probably say 100,000 plus of gear, which is cool, right? There's a value to equipment. Now, it's not, oh, it's pretty much new. So I don't know. Give me like what new is minus 20. No, you're forcing somebody to buy some of your equipment. They're not going to pay you out on that. If you have equipment and I got right next to me sitting right here, and you can maybe see it on YouTube. There it is. I have a X2 Max. Uh, the Zero Max, which is the predecessor of the X2. But the Zero Max Plus. I have that sitting right next to me. Brand new. Brand new. I got it. Did a bunch of videos on it. I'm going to be using it. But it's not new. I mean, it's not used. I can't take that now and sell it to somebody for the same price that I can buy it from WCR. I can't. Even though it's not been used physically, it's used. If I sold a company and that just happened to go with it, I'm getting 50% of that value. The reason is because I'm forcing you to buy that thing. If I really, really, really want a max, which maybe you do, by the way, call me, shameless plug number two. Um, but if you really, really want a new water fed system, you're going to do your research, find the one you want and get it. If you really like the system, you find this one and you find it from somebody selling it, you're going to only buy it from a person for less than what you would get it from the other one. Otherwise, you just buy brand new. You're not buying the possibility of headaches or issues or storage issues or whatever. You're not buying the headaches of maybe not claiming warranties and doing all that stuff, right? You would buy new. So you got to understand that when you have assets, hard assets, you're not selling them at the same price. Same thing with even vehicles. Yes, there's pricing vehicles, but if they buy the whole lot, meaning all your vehicles, equipment, everything, then the ease for you justifies them not having to pay so much. If you take all those vehicles and sell them outright to somebody else, well, you could probably make a little bit more, but now you're putting them out for sale. You got to take the final off. You got to clean them out. You got to, right? So understand that your assets in what you're selling is absolutely dictated by the purchase. So assets themselves are completely separate. If you have a bunch of squeegees, scrubbers, all that stuff, and you go through and try to put a value on each of them, I don't want any of that. I'll go buy my own stuff. I don't need 30 used scrubbers because you didn't throw anything away. If I'm buying that, I'm going to buy it for a, a, a lot, like a, a lot, you know, the, a, a lot of equipment. I'm buying the entire lot for X amount. Now I'll tell you with the equipment, just to give you kind of a ballpark that I sold, um, I was pressure washing trailers and uh, mobile units and I mean, everything that I sold with the company. There's a lot of assets. 
Uh, there was trailers and uh, forklifts and um, pallet shelving and there was office furniture and cubicles and computers and I mean a ton of assets. In that whole asset that I sold, uh, I got probably around um, maybe twenty thousand dollars, if that. Now the trucks were a different story. I got close to value on the trucks, but uh, there was also plows because we did snow removal, brand new snow equipment, um, all that stuff. He got a screaming deal. But the point is because I sold it as a lot. I sold the lot of all my equipment. Now, if somebody's going to buy all of it, they're going to get a better deal than if they pick and choose. Now, I could have separated everything and probably made, you know, $50,000, $75,000. Probably not that much. I don't know. Could have made a lot more. But now what's the hassle worth? What's the timing? What's the whatever? All of that equals into the purchase of a company. Now, here is part of what it's worth, what you get. What you're getting in assets is just going to continue to help the company, right? Again, I can sell a pressure washer for 50% or I could sell it for 75% if I find the right uh, person. But all of that takes so much time to sell that for me to sell it at less really makes a benefit, right? So again, if I'm buying assets, I'm buying them to have most of them as backups, right? Think of all the, the stuff you have or the stuff you're buying, right? There's a lot of stuff, throw it in. I'll use, I'll take old scrubbers, maybe I'll use them, but I'm not gonna pay you for them. If a complete brand new T-bar is 25 bucks, I'm not gonna give you $10 for that thing. Because I don't want it. I'd rather save the money and be like, no. Right? So that's your fine line of what you're buying. Assets are separate. Assets are are a part of the company that you can kind of deal with. Right? If you have a pure water system right now, you're trying to upgrade. Now's the time to sell it because people are hot. They want to buy it and find a good deal. We got people calling saying, hey, I need three systems. Can you get them set up? Set them out. Right? So people are very hot right now. When you go to buy or sell a business, all that asset and equipment, you have to put it out there. How long do you put it out there? How much effort do you put it out there? We make $100 a man hour, we'll say, in our industry. It's a ballpark, 75, whatever your dollar amount is. So now you spend an hour selling something, you just lost $75 of production. That would help build your company for the next umpteen years, right? Make sure that part's worth it when you're selling your assets. Sell it as a lot, be done with it. But it all really comes down to who holds the liability. And this is the number one part of buying a company. This is part of buying the company and part of selling the company and the overall company valuation. Now, I had somebody who was um, going through a divorce and they needed a value for their company to bring to the um, um, procedure or their, to their um, proceedings. It's really, really hard to put a, a, a price on a company because of who you're buying it to. And I'll explain this. Now, yes, there's company valuations and all that kind of stuff. A company valuation of what somebody buys a company for is absolutely different in our industry. Think about this. Not only on the liability side, and I'll explain that in a second, but if I'm selling my window cleaning company in Fresno, California, to another company in Fresno, California, they will pay me more than if I sell my company in Fresno to a company out of Pittsburgh, right? It's less valuable to them because now they got to do a whole bunch of logistics and do a whole bunch of other stuff. Who you sell your company to dictates your price. If I sell it to an existing window cleaning company who can absorb the work, absorb the route, it will give me more money than if I sell it to somebody who has to find the tech, the staff, the leadership, the buildings, the right? So on all of that, who you buy who you sell the company to and who buys it is what dictates it. There's companies 
that I've purchased that I really, really, really wanted. I knew the, con the contracts they had. I knew their name in the industry. I knew their websites and their SEO. I wanted all of that. Now, I'm more willing to pay for that because I want it so bad. It costs me, it would lose me money by not buying it, right? I've had other companies that somebody came to me and I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not interested. Like, and they gave it to me for such a good deal that I took it. Now, this is, again, I've said this story absolutely true, by the way. Um, but I had a company who I was trying to, I always like to say hi to competition. Meet them, see them, say what's up, whatever. Come, let me, let me buy you lunch, let's talk. I just want to say hi, introduce myself. We didn't talk about buying the company. We didn't talk about any of that stuff, right? He was talking about how there's no money in window cleaning and this and this. And he saw my operation. He's like, I, 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 don't, I don't know what you're doing. I can't believe this. I can never catch up to you. I said, well, it's not, it's not about catching up. It's just, you know, we could probably help each other out down the road, you know. If you ever want to get out, I'm here. If you ever want to, you know, sub work and help, maybe we got stuff. He said, oh, this is crazy. We went through, had a great meal, met the guy. I've met him a bunch of times and personally on the street, but really met a guy. And about a week later, he popped in. He goes, hey, man. I was in the area. He, he's from the city right next to us. He was a 15-minute drive. Pretty cool, close. We did a lot of work there, too. He just popped in. He goes, hey, man. I was actually up at this. Uh, my bank's up on this side of town, and I figured I'd stop by, see if you were here. Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, he says, uh, I got something to, to tell you. He goes, I, I do landscaping and window cleaning. And the two of them don't mix well together um you know they're, they're opposite services and i feel like i could take off more on the one side with window cleaning i can never catch you i said well you know it's not again it's not about catching me it's about you know building something and he says uh i just want somebody to take care of my customers i said yeah what are you, what are you looking to do you're looking to sell no he goes i don't even want to go through all that i know that you're the best person in the industry that would take this and my customers would absolutely be taken care of. I'm just giving it to you. I said, you're giving me your company? Yeah. He was like, if you want to buy my tools, I'll probably keep most of them. But he didn't have a lot. It was a one man show. But it goes, all my customers, I'm just going to give them to you. I said, you don't want like a draw or anything? No, man. I, I just want to focus on lawn, lawn care. And uh, I know by handing these guys over to you, I'd rather them just be taken care of. So I was given a company, literally. That would be probably like number six of the companies that I bought but didn't buy. Stuff like that is super, super rare. That was a crazy situation. But for him, it was the best case situation, right? That can happen. But it's who values who, right? Now let's go back to liability. Liability in anything. Liability in um, purchasing or selling is what dictates the higher price. Now, there's a few ways you could buy a company or that you could be bought. One of those ways is somebody comes in and goes, hey, Jersey, I want your company. Uh, here's a check. All right, leave. You're done. Right? The person who wrote the check holds the liability, meaning that if those people don't go with him, don't set up service, back out, uh, you know, everybody finds out and they all jump ship. He holds the liability. He could lose money in that deal. I hold zero liability. I go, cool, all right, see you later. I grab my check, nothing can change. I get the check regardless, right? In that, in that world, the guy who writes the check is going to get the best deal because he's the one that holds the liability. Now, by the way, if you want to understand liability, liability is a bank. A bank borrows you money for a house, a car, or whatever, and they're the ones that hold the liability. That's why when they borrow you money, they make interest on that. Basically, what they're saying is there is a 1% chance you're going to not pay us back. So all of our other loans and holdings, we need to charge 4%. If we make that, then we'll make 3% on all of our money because we have to expect that we're going to lose some. That's liability, right? If the guy writing the check goes, okay, well, 
uh, you're profiting $100,000 a year, everything's in place, this should be a really easy thing for me. I'm not obviously giving you anywhere close to that. I'm gonna pay you less because if that doesn't happen, then I can figure on with loss, I'm actually gonna walk away with say 75,000 in profit. I'll base my figures and prices off that. Now, the opposite side of that is if you are selling a company or the person buying the company, if they hold no liability, they get less money. You actually pay less money for a company. Now, if you're buying a company and you say, hey, I will pay you X, Y, Z due on completion for 12 months. Due on completion means that every time I do this job or any job or any work that came from you, I will pay you a percentage of that. That means they don't have to do any work for a year. They're going to make a percentage of every job sold. That means you, as the person buying the company, are holding the liability. I mean, uh, not holding any liability. Because you're only paying when somebody completes a purchase, right? So only if, not just like, hey, uh, Jane Smith thinks you might want window cleaning. Will you pay me for that? No. But if Jane Smith books, I'll pay you more for that. Right? So that's what's happening. You're paying, usually in that case, you're paying that 30% due on completion type deal. 33%, we'll say. Now, what that means is if somebody has a $300 job, they come to you, you're going to pay that guy a hundred bucks. You're going to pay him a third. Now, the reason you pay a third is because, remember, you're going to be having a minimal of a third to a half as labor costs. So you're still going to either break even or profit a small amount. Now, the first year, you cannot profit but pay expenses and still be okay. The reason that when you buy an account and you don't say, well, I'll give you 100% of it, well, you're losing a lot of money because you have to do that job for three years before you see a dime. And even at three years, you're only going to make 50% of the third year. Year one and two, you make nothing. In fact, you lose money year one. Why does that work? Again, $300 job. If I paid all of that as payment, that means I got to pay somebody to do the work. That labor cost is there. But I absorbed the labor cost because I already paid that money. So now I lost money on the job. If they book year two, I don't have to pay that purchase price again, but I do have to pay labor. And I have to absorb the labor from the first one, which say 50% labor, 50% labor in year two. I make no money on year two. And that's only if they book again with me. If they didn't book again, say they just were a one and done, I lost the labor costs. Now year three comes, I'm still going to pay labor 50%. 50% then goes in my pocket. See where that goes? We don't want such a long payout because, again, that's a lot of liability. We're holding liability for three years to get any money back. Right? Who holds liability is who pays the best, gets the best deal. Right? If you're going to pay somebody outright for an account and somebody comes to you, we're only working off profit. I don't care how much money you made. Total gross. It's a nice figure, but that doesn't matter. What was your labor costs? If you're a one-man show and you did $100,000 last year, how much did you make on taxes? You probably took all of it. That means you made zero profit as a company. You made zero profit as a company. I'm buying profits. I'm not buying company. So you did $100,000 last year, but you're a one-man show. Well, now I have to take that labor cost and take that now off of everything. What am I going to pay somebody to do that? What am I going to pay for the management and the advertisement and the overhead? Now what's left? That's a profit. If you don't show a profit on a business, meaning that money doesn't stay in the business and you paid yourself that profit, then there's no profit then that business is not worth anything. That's when you're getting those ones where I bought businesses for three grand. I bought businesses that were doing almost $100,000 for three grand. And the reason was is because when it all comes down to what I'm profiting off that 100 grand, gross numbers are for other people. Nets for you. Numbers don't lie. Find the number, what the profit is, that's what you pay. That's a one-time check. If I'm doing due on completion, and you profit at $100,000, you're doing completion for the first year, I'm gonna give you $33,000. Again, due on completion for that company. 
$33,000, somebody can sit on their butt for a year, make $33,000 to do absolutely nothing because I'm gonna do it. And I have a vested interest in really doing it well because I wanna keep those customers. See where that is? I'm the labor, I'm the headaches, I'm the everything, that other person just sits there, right? They got no liability. So that's where you're focused on everything. When you're buying just a customer list, it's just a customer list. Those people have to use you. If they don't use you, it's just a name of somebody who likes window cleaning, right? So understand what you're buying and know the liability. Now, if you have any questions, definitely ask, but look at it in numbers. We're still wanting a profit. Nobody wants to run a loss unless the investment on that is great. If I invest money in a bank, I'm losing all that money, but I'm guaranteed to make something on it because of insurance and FDIC and all that stuff. So my investment of that money is means I'm not gonna be without this $50,000 for five years, but at the end of that, if I give them $50,000 for five years, I'm gonna make X amount. Same thing with a business, right? Anyway, you guys know who I am, Jersey from windowcleaner.com. And again, I would love to be your rep. How I make my cheddar. If you ever want to be like, yo, this was a great episode. I learned something from me. I want to give you something. I don't do Patreon. All I do is want to put your orders in. So let me put your orders in. 862-312-2026 is my number. And uh, every show by this time, if you've made it this far, I want to know if you're on uh, YouTube or you go to YouTube, comment the word um, um, honeysuckle because that'll confuse people <laughs> even more. Just put in honeysuckle in the comments and I will know that you made it this far. Uh, get your subscription again to American Window Cleaner Magazine. By the way, we are the longest running window cleaning magazine in the world and it's amazing. So be a nerd, get the magazine, go to awcmag.com, get a subscription, please, please. You're gonna find it amazing. You're gonna get a ton of value from it, so go and do that. Uh, more importantly, before next week, by the way, last week I forgot to say this, but go out there and find out how to buy the other guy, but more importantly, be epic.